Hi there, and welcome to the QImage Ultimate Getting Started Guide. This video covers QImage Ultimate 2018, which is our 20th anniversary edition. It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since QImage was born, but the QImage brand was born in 1998 and has evolved into other products since that time. QImage Ultimate itself has been available since 2010, but we're celebrating 20 years of the QImage brand and working with you, the customer, and we want to thank each and every user of the software and thank you for your feedback over the years as it has helped us get to where we are today. This video I'm going to try to keep pretty simple and just show you how the newly designed interface works and how you would go about doing your batch photo printing jobs. When you first open QImage Ultimate, you'll be greeted with the main screen here showing the thumbnails, the live view of your page, and some controls on the right that you can use to make your print job. If you're coming from the plugins and you started in Photoshop or Lightroom and you use the plugins to send your photos from Photoshop or Lightroom to QImage Ultimate, you'll just see thumbnails of the images that you sent from those programs. If you're using it in standalone mode, you can click this bar here to open the folders, go to a location on one of your hard drives or your network, select a folder and the thumbnails will appear. And once you've selected the folder, you can collapse this so you can see more thumbnails. In this area up here, there's a drop down that shows you the last 20 either plugin exports or folders that you visited for convenience. And I'll show you how you can expand or collapse the interface here to suit you the best. One thing that you can do here is drag the splitter and either show fewer thumbnails and a bigger live view or show more thumbnails and a smaller live view of your page. So if you're going through a lot of thumbnails, that can be useful. You can set this to however you like. There's a little arrow up here that allows you to temporarily expand or collapse the thumbnail view, or you can right click on this arrow and go back to the recommended view, which is basically optimizing the space that your page uses here. Now, there are different sizes that you can pick for your thumbnails, so you can select small thumbnails if you want smaller thumbnails and be able to see more of them or if you have a large folder with a lot of images in it and you don't know which ones you're going to select you want to see a lot of them you can temporarily expand this view by left clicking on the arrow and that will maximize the thumbnail view while still giving you a small preview of the page here and when you're done selecting and working with thumbnails adding sizes you can go back by left clicking again it takes it back to where you had it set before so that's how this area of the interface works over on the right side the first time that you use QImage Ultimate you're going to want to set up your printer and your media type media size and your settings for your printer and you can just go from top down here you can select the printer that you want I have a lot of printers here that I test regularly for the software but the one that I use most of the time is the Pro 100 so I'll select that printer then the media type you can drop down here and select the media type that you want you can select the paper size and these paper sizes are sorted by size so the largest ones will be at the top I use 13 by 19 sometimes so you can select the size that you want for your paper select the source whether it's tray or roll or bin one bin two and that type of thing the orientation is just the page orientation of the live view it's the same as setting that in the driver from landscape to portrait and those buttons are repeated down here on the bottom for quick use 
you can go back to a portrait page by clicking the quick buttons down here as well that can be useful if you're on a different tab and you just want to change your page to a landscape so the last option here that we want to use for the printer we want to be able to set is the printer profile most printer drivers install a dozen or so profiles for various paper types that that manufacturer offers so you can drop this down click on choose profile and pick the profile for that paper or you can do let printer driver manage color which would be the default if you don't have a profile once you've selected all those options um, obviously you have to tell it what printer you're going to use what type of paper what size paper once you've done all that we want to click on this properties button here which opens the driver so I'm going to click the properties button and what that does is it brings up a little cheat sheet here telling you what options you want to set in your driver it's already brought over things like the media type and media size so all you have to change are the color management options and this basically tells you that given the fact that you've selected a profile you need to go through these options here one time and turn color management off by setting these options once you've done that you once you follow these instructions on the cheat sheet and clicked OK now you've verified the printer driver properties for the things that you set above that so those properties are now saved for this printer and that paper type if I go to something like a luster paper then it'll bring back the last settings I used for that luster paper notice that the properties have not been verified for that paper type yet because I haven't set them up yet and the default comes up here but when I pick this photo paper glossy 2 again you'll notice that it brings back all the settings that were in effect when I last used that paper type the profile is here all the driver settings are recalled so you really only have to open the driver once for each paper type and from that point forward you can just make your settings here if you want to use 13 by 19 instead of 8.5 by 11 you can just change that and it all the other settings will be remembered so that's a quick and convenient way of being able to just use the driver and set the options in the driver that you need once for each paper type for that printer the options down here I'm not going to go over because these are uh, higher level options you should set them to the default for the best quality uh, but if you want more or less sharpening that's there if you want to print file information text information under each print those options are there too but you really don't have to go over these processing options for your first print job now I'm going to switch over to the prints tab because I've set up my paper and now by virtue of the fact that I've set up my printer, media type, media size, now QImage Ultimate knows what the printable area is for that paper size, which happens to be 8.0 by 10.685 on 8.5 by 11 paper. It picked that up from the driver. So now it knows what type of paper that you're working with and what the margins are. And now we can go forward and go ahead and print some photos. The easiest way to print photos is to just click on an object like you can click on a thumbnail and then click on a size. So I got a five by seven of that thumbnail. Click on a thumbnail, click on a size. I got a four by six of that one. Click on a thumbnail, now I'll click on a wallet size. So I got a wallet. So it's as simple as that. You can select multiple thumbnails by clicking the checkbox or by using control or shift, holding that down while you click thumbnails. Um, and if you have three thumbnails selected and you click wallet, you've got three wallets based on these three thumbnails. And if you want to change the size of a print on the page, it's just as easy. You can select this print and then click 5x7 and that changes it from a 2x3 to a 5x7 now it moved it to a different page because I have sorting on 
which means it sorts from the largest prints to the smallest. The largest prints will be on page one, and then you get smaller and smaller prints as you move forward in your job. If you don't want it to sort, just uncheck that box. But that's how easy it is. You can literally just click on a print and then click on a size. Now I have an eight by 10. Don't like that, go back to five by seven. Don't like that, make it a four by six. So it's as easy as that. It'll arrange it for you automatically. And one thing that it will do, it, let's say I don't want this print. Remove that one, remove this one. Now you can see what it's doing. If you don't have many prints on the page, it'll put the prints in the top left. And that's because there's a chance you might want to feed this empty sheet of paper back into the printer later and make use of that. But once you get enough prints on the page, let's say I add another four by six of this, now it will perfectly center the prints on the page because you're using most of the paper and there's no sense trying to save two to three inches at the bottom. And that's the intelligent part of this IntelliSpace placement option. There's a lot of different placement options in here, but I stick with IntelliSpace because it tends to do what I want all the time. The only other thing that I'll mention here is that whenever you select an object to be sized, if I select this and I want to make an 8x10 of it, I just click that print and now it tells me when a new size is selected, I'm going to be changing the size of one selected print. So if I click 8x10, it'll make that print an 8x10. If I click on a thumbnail and I look over here, it says when I click a new size, I'm going to be adding one thumb at the selected size. So basically, whatever you select, you can just click a size and it will do this. If you just want to set a new working size, like, I know I want to work with 5x7s from this point forward, and I don't want to affect anything. I can just click this top box here, and then click 5x7. Now that has set the current working size to 5x7, and I can just start clicking pluses, the plus button on these thumbnails, and just move forward. So I'll click this, gives me a 5x7 of that print. Click this, gives me a 5x7 of that print click this gives me a five by seven so that's the way that works and the new interface is designed to allow you to see everything you need at the same time without dialogues popping up on top of other things like sizes that have to be closed it's all just here for you to work with now the other thing that I'll show you is based on cropping you'll notice that this print right here if I hover over it, it says it's five by seven. Well, that's the size that we used. But the original image was not a seven by five aspect ratio. So it automatically crops out the center of the print to give you that exact size that you chose. If you don't want the print to be cropped, with this print selected, I can turn the crop off and now it's a seven by 4.68. If I want to turn it back on, click the scissors again and it crops it. If I want to adjust the crop, I can go down here and click Edit Page and the cropping tool shows up. I can select the print that I want to crop. This one is already selected and we use the cropping tool on the right side. So we can drag the image to the right or left and the preview updates to show you what you've done. You can zoom in and adjust the image by dragging it. and use this cropping tool here to get your cropping just right for that print and then just click done. The print is updated. It shows a little symbol here telling you that you have a manual crop on that print. And the great thing is every time you select this particular image and you say I want a 5 by 7 it will bring back that crop because it says the last time I printed a 5 by 7 I preferred this particular crop so it just brings it back. If you want to turn it off, it's as simple as clicking on that remove manual cropping button, say yes, and it removes the cropping. The cropping is still there. The default auto cropping is still there to get the five by seven because you have crop turned on with the scissors, but it just crops out the center of the photo by default to give you that size. 
So obviously we've created our print job now. We're ready to print. The only thing we have to do is go up here to this button and click the print button and it will send it to our printer. Click print, OK, and it'll start printing. So I wanted to keep this video relatively short. Hope this helps you a lot with getting started with QImage Ultimate, our 20th anniversary edition. And thank you again for all your feedback over the years. You all are the ones who helped make this product what it is today, which is the highest quality photo printing software that you can find. And now with the new changes to the user interface, it should simplify things to make it the simplest photo printing app. So thanks again for watching and enjoy QImage Ultimate 2018.